Hey Valkyries, welcome into another edition of Inside Valkyrie Athletics. I'm your host Chris Sawyer, my co-host Sydney Grimes. New set, as we say, new year, new set. Sydney, glad to have you back. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back in front of this new set right now. Yeah, you didn't know this was awesome. going to happen, did you? Yeah, I know. Came back to Pride. That's right. 2021. How was your break first? I know you, you got to go to Florida and play some cool. I don't know if you played golf, but you went to Florida, which is nice. I did, yeah. I got to see some family down in Florida, played lots of golf and warm weather. So it was a nice break, but I'm ready to be back starting class. I've got spring season coming up that I'm extremely pumped and ready for. So. Yeah, who thought, I mean, we, we did this last uh, semester, we were just out running around with a camera. Right. We've got Frank behind the camera now, our new GA. Thank you again, Frank Chapman, for setting up this set for us, and I think uh, it's going to be a good year. we got a lot of great things planned. Yeah, we have a lot of exciting interviews for today's show. We have a golf coach, uh, Patty, then we also have a lacrosse coach, we have a softball coach, and then we have two student athletes from the volleyball team. Yeah, we're, we're, this is just our most packed show we've had. Everybody yeah. wants to be on the new set. So. I know, everybody wants to come here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you guys are getting ready to gear up. Uh, basketball's in the heat of things right now. They just had their first Conference Carolinas win uh, right. against Erskine. Uh, we had our Athlete of the Week, uh, Kishana Fair, as well. So that was our first Athlete of the Week that we've had this year. Um, so it's exciting, exciting times. And I can't believe every sport's going to be going in oh, about, about a month. I know. It's going to be extremely hectic and a lot of fun. Make sure you check out GoValkyries.com. Yeah, everything will be live streamed. Everything will yeah. be up there. We'll be running around like crazy. But hey, glad everybody's with us here. Uh, episode 2 of 2021. I'm Chris. This is Sydney. We're going to get in and uh, we're going to go ahead and meet our, um, our head lacrosse coach, That's right. uh, Taylor, and start the show off with her. Yep, All right. Let's get to it. All right. Till then, as always, go Valkyries. Welcome back, Valkyries to Inside Valkyrie Athletics. We are joined by first year head women's lacrosse coach, Taylor Wooden. Taylor, welcome. Thank you. First time, first time on, on the set, the yeah. new set. Hey, you're a first year coach here at Converse. Um, talk about your mindset coming into Converse, what brought you here, and, and what it's like really to take over a team that's not the team you recruited. Yeah, sure. Um, so, first year coming here, it's been interesting with COVID, for sure. I was excited to come here because of everything that we're building, moving to the university, adding men in. Um, it's really a diamond in the rough year. I'm excited to kind of help this program grow and continue to grow. Um, my mindset coming into the season and COVID was just uh, to kind of bring our team together. And here a team is definitely different, um, but it's exciting because you're learning how to coach all different girls that you didn't bring in. And then on top of that, you need to add girls in that um, you want to help raise that culture that you're now creating the groundwork for this year. And Coach, kind of talk a little bit about what the preparation is for this spring season and kind of a little bit behind the scenes of what practices look like now. So we're kind of taking it day by day. Um, kids going into quarantine, kids going out of quarantine. <laughs> um, every day's an adventure it seems like lately, but we're kind of going step by step. We're building back from the basics. Each week we have a different uh, focus. So last week was fundamentals, this week it's communication and teamwork. Um, and we're really preparing for our February 15th game, um, having a mindset that that could change and we could quickly have to change to our February 20th game. Um, so we're really just kind of focusing on us, what we can do better, and you know, day by day, how we can build from there. All right, I've got to ask. I, I'm in the press box. I can see practice. There's a game you guys play towards the end of practice. You know what I'm talking about? We play so many All right, games. I, I, don't, I don't know. So what is that? You, is that something just to kind of break at the end of practice, kind of break the tension and get everybody, because I can hear laughing and <laughs> having fun. But talk about your mindset on that, because it was me and the, our director of athletics were sitting there watching it the other day, and we thought it was cool because we heard all this laughter, and it sounded like everybody was having fun. So we're like, what's going on today? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we start every practice with a game, just a different kind of game, a fun game. Sometimes it's a penny game, sometimes it's tire tails, uh, but they break into the purple and white teams. And I just do it to kind of break up their day, to get them in a competitive mindset, to get them having fun, kind of out of their heads if they had a long day or a bad day or whatever. Just kind of bring them back on the field. Um, and then we always end practice with shout outs. So freshman class, sophomores, juniors, seniors, everyone has to have a shout out of something that they saw in practice or someone that they saw in practice that really did something greater that stood out just to remind each other that we're building each other up uh, that we see each other that we see each other working hard and just that communication has been really really cool to see and it's brought them together a lot so i love the laughing i love that they have fun they definitely buy into everything we do even the silly games that i have um, but it expects it's a really good time for us sure, sure. one more thing there, there's a sign above your door yes um, and i, I try to it says practice but what's the word on the um goodness it says 
practice like a champion, act like a champion. Yeah, because it has the act. I, yes. I love that sign. I think <laughs> I, I see it every day I come in, and I think um, it's great to have you putting that on our student athletes. But um, Sydney, we were talking about the presidential um, president of Ottawa, and I know right. lacrosse had uh, lacrosse had a number of uh, student yeah. athletes on that too. <laughs> so congratulations! And, and Sydney was asking in another segment with our volleyball players on how you, you manage that. Though, how do you? Tell your student athletes to to be able to manage academics and juggle practice, and then when games come, but but still excel in the classroom like they've done. Yeah, I'm definitely proud of them. Um, you know, you talked about inheriting a team, and I definitely inherited a team that um, loves to be in the classroom. They have aspirations to be teachers, to be doctors, to be vets, um, and they have big dreams. And I love being able to support that. We do meetings twice a month, an academic meeting, and then another meeting just about anything you should check in on their mental health how are they doing um, and my word this year was perspective and we talk a lot about that perspective that we get to come do this we get to be on campus we get to go into class because there's a lot of students that don't get to do that um, and they've kind of taken that to heart and they love being out there and it's funny you say that because my mom got me that for Christmas <laughs> to go in the locker room because of COVID right now you know we're not going in the locker room so I put it above my door and a lot of people have said you know when I look at that that just reminds me that I get to be here um, and every day that I walk into my office, I remind myself that, that I get to be here, that I get to have my dream of being the coach. So um, I'm glad you know, so I'm glad yeah, you too. <laughs> That's awesome. We're glad to have you here. So. Well, you know what? And February 13th, Newberry. 15th. 15th. Yep. February 15th. Right. <laughs> but we will be live streaming yes. all, all your games. Uh, we got Frank behind the camera, he and I, and Sydney and AC. When they're not playing, we'll make sure everything's there. All the parents, all the friends, fans can watch the game. Come support uh, Taylor on the computer since they yeah. can't come right now. Let's <laughs> support her. That's right. Go Valkyries.com. Thank you, Sydney. Cut get, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> cut out $50. Go to GoValkyries.com. Just like Sydney said, there's a buy cutout tab on the front page. Randy Loggins and Jen are going to love you for promoting that. Yeah, my parents are all about it. <laughs> but again, uh, check them out. Lacrosse, glad to have you here, Taylor. Good yes, luck this you. season. And thanks for stopping by. Our Absolutely. Set. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Hey, guys, we'll be right back. Until then, go Valkyries. Hey Valkyries, welcome back into Inside Valkyrie Athletics. We are here with two volleyball student athletes, Abby and Kelsey. Local, local players. Um, glad to have you guys here. Abby, I'm gonna start with you. How has it been not being able to play in the fall, having to kind of go through the whole COVID protocol? You're now back, February 23rd. It's the light at the end of the tunnel against Emmanuel. How has it been, especially being a freshman, it's been a lot, I'm sure it's been a lot different for you, not what you expected as you came into Converse. Right, so um, it's been a lot of adjusting and having to learn how to um, incorporate with when we're missing Kelsey or missing other players like at practice. And a lot of us have actually had it, so it's been different and difficult having to rearrange and work around not having everybody at practice. So that's what's been difficult with the COVID and then trying to swing into things like having a spring season. So we've been practicing all fall and then now we're trying to work into going into the spring. So. And congratulations, you both made the presidential uh, honor roll. So just kind of talk a little bit about what it's like to be a student athlete having to juggle academics as well as athletics. Yes, it was a lot different than in high school. So in high school, you know, your teachers are like in the classroom a lot more. And when you're in college, you only have class a certain amount of days. So on the days you don't have class, you have to do homework on those days. And it can be hard to stay on top of things. But me and Abby, I think we've done a pretty good job on keeping on top of things. And um, we're both education majors, so we'll be doing clinicals real soon. So we'll have to work around our clinical hours and we'll practice, but I think we'll be able to fix that. And again, I echo what Sydney said, congratulations. That's a big feat, uh, especially having to juggle everything, like you said, being education majors, getting ready for clinicals. All right, let's talk about the upcoming season. I, we've seen you guys in the gym practicing a lot. Um, you know, Coach Amy has, has got you guys working. And you guys are ranked, I don't know if you know, you're ranked fifth preseason Conference Carolinas. And uh, from what I see, I think you guys are a lot better than that. So I know there's probably a chip on your shoulder, but talk, what are you excited about the upcoming season and, and what are you looking forward to? And what do you think you guys can do to make some noise in Conference Carolinas? So as a freshman, I was coming in with a completely open mind and just the competition that we have within each other is like what pushes us to be better. And like coming in fifth, like I had no idea what that meant. And then having to ask my teammates what that meant, I was like, well, that's not good, is it? But that just pushes us to be even better and pushes us to push each other even more because we want that win and we want to show that we are capable of winning. 
And then you being a junior, what is your thought on that preseason forward game? I, we have been placed last recently, well, like in years past, so it was actually kind of good to hear that we were fit, kind of encouraging. And the seniors have, that we have this year, they have stepped up and they have set like this role that they're the leaders and they have really encouraged freshmen to step it up and it makes our competition with each other, like Abby said, a lot better. And we just want to win, honestly. <laughs> Well, I got to say, you know, again, we watch you guys practice. You guys are excited, exciting, excitable. Your purple and gold games were great. Uh, it was really close. Uh, I think it was, what, 25-23, 25-22. So a lot of good, um, I think, competition between all you guys. So I know you're excited to finally play somebody else. But we will be um, live streaming. The reason we're in this gym today is because they're putting brand new cameras in the gym, which will benefit volleyball as well. So we're excited all your games will be live streamed through Synergy which are these AI, new AI cameras that follow the ball. So that's exciting for your team um, as well. But we want to wish you the best of luck. We'll be following you. We'll be, again, live streaming all their games. Uh, Frank and I and Sydney and AC will make sure that's on there and all the parents and, and fans and friends can watch it. But best of luck to you guys. Thanks for stopping by inside Valkyrie Thank Athletics. You. I know it's nerve wracking a little bit. Like that. <laughs> hey, we'll be right back. Until then, go Valkyries. Valkyries, welcome back into Inside Valkyrie Athletics. We are joined by Coach Jen George, softball. Welcome, Coach. Hey, how's it going? Glad to have you here on the set. Uh, as we say, new year, new set. Uh, getting ready. Hey, let's talk about softball a little bit. It's been a, a different year for you. Uh, you were a GA here, uh, now head coach. Not having fall ball, um, and then going in, as we were just talking before we went on air, you're playing really the least amount of games that you would normally play in a regular season. Did not have a fall ball, a do you think that'll affect you guys, or do you think you're you're pretty much ready? You're full practice now, and the girls are pretty probably really excited to get on the uh, to get on the field. Yeah, I think um, since every school didn't have the fall ball season, we were with the the crowd of people. So luckily, you know, it's not like we're coming from behind. So we'll be as prepared as everybody else. I think the hardest part is just not knowing how we're going to perform in game time. Um, you know, we practice live. We do as many scrimmages as we can in our squad, but that outside competition, you know, you can never replace that, never can replace the adrenaline of the games and, and the flow of the game. So um, that's been the biggest difference, just not having the opportunity to really see how cohesive we look on a field against outside competitions for sure. And I saw from your schedule that you have a lot of double headers, not necessarily as many as you would from previous seasons, but kind of just talk about the conditioning and preparation, getting your players ready for those double headers. Yeah, so our game days are really, really long. Um, we're out at the softball field usually seven, eight hours a day uh, for game days with double headers. So with that, our practices do grow in length as we get closer to game day. So, you know, we get four total hours from the NCAA in the, in the day. So they'll go to weights in the morning and then our practices are typically two and a half, three hours. And they're not, um, they're not fast paced practices. They're very slow, lots of breakdown stuff. So we lengthen our practices a little bit closer to season. And then we're in the weight room as much as, much as possible. So this season, because we've had to divide our team into two um, weight groups with the reduced capacity in the weight room, we're not in the weight room nearly as much as we typically are, but we're replacing that with some more base running at practice and some faster pace drills at practice to replace that extra time in the weight room. Yeah, Sydney mentioned the double headers. Let's talk a little, not strategy, but so with your pitchers, I saw your pitchers in here yesterday. Mm -hmm. So when you go to double header, is there ever a time where the same pitcher pitches both games? If they're hotter, you always are making sure, I mean, how many pitchers do you normally, would, would you normally carry on a team? We have at least five pitchers on the team at any given time. Um, this year we have about seven girls that can pitch, so we'll have some starting pitchers and some relief pitchers. There's no such thing as too much pitching right. in softball. So um, every once in a while you'll stumble upon teams that'll ride a pitcher for two games. Um, with how many games we play, that gets tougher to do. Um, so even if somebody's hot, if it's not a conference game, we'll typically still split games between pitchers so that they're not getting too tired and too worn out. Um, but you know, if we're late in the season and somebody's on fire and it's a conference game and there's a lot at stake, I'm not ever against throwing a pitcher back-to-back -back games. Um, but we typically don't do that frequently when we have you know five, six people that are throwing for us. And congratulations, I saw that a bunch of your players made the presidential honor roll. So just kind of talk about how you want your students to strive on and off the softball field and kind of how you push them to do that academically as well. 
So yeah, anytime I recruit anybody here, all the girls know that academics are priority number one. Getting them across that stage is always a huge priority, especially in four or less years. Um, so we are constantly putting a huge emphasis on academics. They are encouraged to go to tutoring. We monitor their study hall. We meet with them weekly to discuss academics. So we do the best we can to make sure that they're successful in the classroom first. And then that softball piece comes in second. So yeah, it's it's huge to be able to have that many people on the presidential honor list. Well, Coach, we appreciate you stopping by the set today. Yeah, thank uh, you. We, we do plan on trying to make sure we live stream your games. Uh, you guys play off campus, but we're, we've had discussions, Randy and I, to see if we can make sure that happens. Um, so I want everybody to be able, we can't really have fans right now. We haven't uh, figured out the whole spring thing yet, but students, uh, parents, hopefully can watch the games with you guys and, and support the Valkyries on and off the field. And Coach, best of luck to you this year. Thank uh, we're you. looking forward to coming out and seeing you guys. Awesome, yeah, good All luck. right, thanks Coach. Hey, we'll be right back. Until then, go Valkyries. Welcome back, Valkyries. We are here with head women's golf coach, Coach Patty. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Chris, oh, how are you? We've been trying to get you on here forever, so we're, I know, we're glad I know. to have you. Busy lady. <laughs> and this is going to be a great interview because my co-host is one of your student athletes. So, that's right. Yeah, but that's right. before she gets into the golf, Patty, talk about um, just the preparation you guys have been going through. You got to play a couple matches in the fall, which was great. Yeah. Um, actually, Sydney won one of them, yeah. and then your, the other ones. A lot of your student athletes really placed high. Yeah. What's your expectation for the spring coming in after that fall? Well, we had a great fall. I mean, we really had a great fall. It was great that we had several players have had top 10 finishes. Sydney actually had two top five finishes, including a win and another top 10 finish. So we're very excited about the fall. We were really grateful that we got to play. As you know, it was a great competition. The other thing that was different about the fall, it's probably going to carry through with some some tournaments this spring is we actually played as a group in five as a team so that really helped our team bonding i think and it also gave me an opportunity to just really notice what people need to work on the most to take their game to the next level so that was very helpful um and so for preparation our first home tournament or it's going to be we're going to be hosting the first term of the year uh, february 22nd and 23rd so we're probably going to go with that to in that tournament as well, just playing with your own teams because we feel like it's a little bit safer. Uh, what other teams do when they host, I don't know exactly because we do play some some tournaments that are not in our conference. They may you know pair you with different teams, so we'll see. But with our preparation, we just try to play as much as we can. We're dodging a lot of rain at, at the moment. But luckily, we do have a swing room, so we can get a lot of great work done in the swing room when we can't get out to play. And you know when we when it's cold in that we sometimes work in the swing room instead of instead of the uh, golf course. But the other thing we've done this year that's really a great addition, we have some everybody has a, like a practice tube of Titleist balls, and so we're really working on our short games to take them to the next level. And we feel like that's the the area that we can improve on the most to get the scores down where we want them to be. We have a very talented team, very a lot of depth with our talent, so we're really excited about. And you mentioned a little bit about the preparation for practices and getting ready for our spring season. So just kind of walk us through a little bit what practice looks like on the course. Well, on the golf course, sometimes we do the class times. We only have time to play, say, four holes or, or maybe even five holes. We have several ways at our golf course, our home course is the Carolina Country Club. And they're wonderful to us. And they actually have on the front nine and the back nine, there's several ways that you can go out and just play four or five holes and sometimes that's all we have time for but we do try to warm up before we do that um, and then when we're out on the golf course we try to do a lot of game-like practice so especially around the greens when it's not crowded we've got to try to encourage everyone to hit a second shot if they don't chip it say within five feet or ten feet and that that really helps too because at carolina right now the greens are fantastic probably some of the best greens you'll ever find anywhere but they are fast. They're almost like tour. They're almost like tour level fast at this point because it's a little cold, and um, so that's something that we're working really hard on to get people to learn how to read the grain, use the grain, and work on your scoring skills. We do a lot as much on course practice as we can because we feel like that's the most value, you know, valuable type of practice to prepare you for um, tournament play. Right, and you mentioned how our first tournament is home, and fortunately for us our conference is actually held at our home course as well. So kind of just talk about that excitement of having a home court advantage. Yes, we are really, really excited to have our, our conference, conference Carolinas championship at Carolina this spring. It'll be the second week of April. We can't wait and we feel very, very blessed to have it there. Um, 
I do think it gives us a bit of an advantage because like I said, the greens can be pretty tricky. So we're gonna work hard to perform well. At the same time, we just wanna try to work hard to have you know excellence at every event we play and we don't wanna to put too much pressure on the team. But it does really help to know the golf course because that is a course where the greens can get a little tricky. Yes, it is difficult <laughs> if you don't know it. <laughs> That's right. And throughout all of our interviews, we've mentioned the presidential honor roll. So you did have quite a few players that yeah. made that. So yeah. just kind of talk about how you prepare your students to strive on and off the golf course. Well, luckily, I've always been really, really lucky to have really great student athletes the entire time that I've been a coach here, and I've really never had to worry much about it. We've, uh, honestly, the golf team has almost always won the <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Academic Excellence Award, the Valkyrie's Academic, Academic Excellence Award. I think there's only been like really one time where we haven't won it, but we're even when we haven't won, we're very, very close. So I don't really have to do much, except the one thing I do try to do is is tell people all the time that, hey, I want, I want you to be, you know, at practice and at your workouts. If somebody really has a lot going on and they have a huge test and they feel like they're not ready, I try to be understanding it and let them take the day off practice or sometimes even the day off workout just because, you know, it's very important for golf to be relaxed and you can't be relaxed if you feel like you got too much on your plate. So right. um, some people may think I'm even sometimes a little bit too flexible, but I just, you know, I can, I, if somebody takes advantage of that, then obviously that'll change. But luckily I've never had anybody taking advantage of that. And so I have some very committed students and very committed student athletes and very grateful for that. Yeah, thank you, Patty, for joining us today. Chris. Oh, thank you. We call our coach Patty. Good luck this year. Good luck, Sydney, as well. And uh, hey, guys, we'll be right back. Look forward to uh, checking out what golf has to do and hopefully finish high and maybe win a conference championship. We year, hope so. Right. We're shooting for that. We'll be right back. Go Valkyries. Hey Valkyries, welcome back. Great show. Yeah, it was awesome. We had a lot of special guests. It was good. Yeah, it actually packed. A lot, a lot of good information coming on. We talked about the presidential honor roll. All of these coaches had players. Uh, again, congratulations to you as well for Thanks being you. on it. But, and congratulations to all our student athletes for, again, as Sydney was talking to the coaches, juggling athletics, but also getting it done in the classroom. Right, yeah. I mean, so, I, think, I think, you know, we can keep doing this. Yeah. As long yeah. as they let us do this, we'll be showing up here. That's uh, right. That's right. Awesome. Make sure you check out GoValkyries.com. All of the um, game recaps will be up there as well as our social media. So just make sure you check that out as well as our live streams will be up there Absolutely. too. Absolutely. So. Hey, good luck to all our teams. And um, Sydney, I will uh, see you next week. That's right. We'll see you next week. Another action-packed uh, show. A lot of fans. Again, thanks to Frank behind the camera getting this going, our producer. And as we always say, until then, as always, go Valkyries.